Uh, we are back and uh, yeah so We are back and uh, I uh, it is time to launch deeper. See if I can change something. I don't know if I can tag. I can tag myself. Okay, it's fine. I want to do that. I am uh, back. We are back and I'm operating in the in a, a page now, not the account.
so we switched accounts and we see how we build on this one uh, time to launch deeper <laughs> time for separation and walking into that which God called Okay, they will catch up, you will find me. <laughs> I am happy to be back. I am... It is time. Just in case you don't see me a lot in your things, it's because I am now standing up straight. To all my mentors out there, and you have mentored me, you have made sure I eat every day. I am really humbled, I am honored, it has been quite a journey, thank you so much. Let me go and launch deeper, let me go and fly higher, let me go and, s and uh, swim. You choose your lane and you swim your race. This is me now officially choosing my lane and swimming my race. See you around. Otherwise, I'm happy to be back here. I can only share in uh, a WhatsApp. I can't share in uh, there. It will be 
done by friends the way we push pe other people's pages to the next level I hope and pray that you can stand in the gap also it's not a must but uh, we work together to push higher <laughs> you know when God created us and we have our own gardens to till and uh, now I officially go to till my own garden to a higher ground I will be around I will be around I cannot neglect my work I have the work of God I have assignments I have instructions which I follow to the dot I don't just work for just I'm very sorry if you did not understand me the time was around you some of you thought I don't have things to do I have things to do a lot and now it's it's that time that I officially fly it was an honor meeting you it was an honor working with you to my mentors I'll always come back and equip myself because I learn every day each one of us needs the six thank you so much for teaching me thank you so much for being patient with me thank you so much for loving me thank you so much for your feedback the positive and the negative I welcome it so that I can grow thank you so so much I am really humbled on such a lovely holy Thursday but I needed to officially say appreciate people who have been in my life and made sure that I grow they have made sure that they teach me they have made sure that uh, I become a better person where I am I feel my my legs are strong enough to stand because the foundation I'm standing on is Jesus the foundation I'm standing on is Jesus and I believe I will not sink I will not die it is time to get out of the boat It's time to get out of the boat and uh, step in the water. It is my time. It is you to know your time. Your friends will not know your time. Your friends will just enjoy to use your time. So it is you to know the time by asking the Holy Spirit. It is you to know your time. Your friends don't know your time. Don't even inquire. Because they also have their own time. They have their own races to run. They have their own gardens to till. Thank you so, so, so much for endeavoring to make sure you put me in line. Thank you so much for making sure I obey rules and regulations. It hasn't been easy, but I am humbled. I am honored. It is, I'm overwhelmed. It is a little bit emotional, but I am, I am humbled. The Lord told people back home, someone got a dream and the Lord told them to pray for me because I'm in school and I was doing a PhD. When that time came in the physical realm, it hasn't been easy. To the PhD holders, I, hum I'm, I am honored and humbled to know you guys who went to do a PhD physically. A PhD you do in the spiritual realm is another story altogether. A PhD done when it's God teaching you and is using different avenues to teach you and align you in the work. Mm, mm, mm. It is something else. Because I have seen Chivoko from east, left, right and center for me to grow, for me to learn, for me to obey. I have seen rules 
to put me in line to obey rules and regulations i have seen you know you need a negative and a positive charge so that you can charge and it's been quite a journey i am really honored i am really humbled thank you so much for loving me thank you so much for praying for me thank you so much for putting me in line I wouldn't have grown I wouldn't have grown but I am humbled from every friend of mine who has made sure that you mentor me positively and negatively I wouldn't have grown I wouldn't have made it this far I was going to give up but your negative response and positive response has helped me to grow <laughs> It has helped me to push higher the fact that you've ignored me. It has helped me to push higher to understand my assignment, to understand my position and not to play around. I am honored. Neyanziza te mujango ko. Yes, wachi babalide. Thank you for everything. If the devil had not touched Job, tayandi tegede. Singa stani teyakwata ku Yobu, tayandi tegede. Yobu would have taken things for granted. Neyanzi zanyo banage, neyanzi ege. Thank you for being part of the Chwok squad. Thank you for being part of the pruning session. It hasn't been easy. I almost died. I almost died. <laughs> Thank you for pushing me hard. Sandy, kuze Sandy, take it. The Sandy, what do you know? Nadia, to the corner, Nessa, Sida. Because when the charm all over, I lost my self-esteem. I started to pity on myself. And what is funny, in 2001, the Lord used someone to tell me to be careful. The Lord used someone for me to grow and help myself. The Lord, the Lord used someone to tell me to be careful because I feel pity for myself. When that person told me that, I felt offended. But in this season, I understood what the Lord was telling me. It has been seven good years. It has been seven good years. And I'm not where I used to be. You have pushed me to work hard. You have pushed me to pray hard, to read hard. You've enabled me to tap into a realm I never knew I would be able to touch. Thank you so much. I don't know whether it's like that for everyone on their side. But I, since we are different and we have different assignments, I guess it works different. Thank you so much. It's, it's an honor to meet you. It's an honor to study with you. It's an honor to work with you. Those I worked with at church, those I met in school, my family members, friends I got to know from others. Thank you. It is been such an honor. It's it's been quite an honor. You'll see me around, but sometime I left a message. Time is not money. Time is life. Whoever you give your time can't give it back. The only thing they can do is to to reciprocate. That is a legacy. 
to reciprocate everything they've learned from you and you push it to the next level. That is how we love people. There are people who went to be with the Lord and uh, we always wake up when people are dead. We always put in practice things that dead people used to say. When they are still alive, we don't really care. We don't give them time. It is sad, but I guess that is how man learns. But me as a person, I'm a game changer. I can't wait for you to die. I have to be there to learn and grow, to better myself before it's too late. Because I hate regrets. I, I hate regrets. So I utilize my time well with whoever I meet. So that we can fly high. I am humbled. I was still sharing myself on WhatsApp because uh, Facebook, you cannot find these pages. You have to, to go deeper. So that's why I have to let others know who don't know what's going on. Because some time back, someone told me that I can't find you. It is us to help others to build their pages depending on what they are teaching. I was supposed to start that when the year was start, starting, I did not do it. So it's been well long overdue. Thank you so much for pushing me. Thank you for praying for me. Thank you for, in, for loving on me, counseling me, rebuking me. It's, it's an honor. It's really an honor to our spiritual fathers, the mothers of the land. I am honored to be a daughter. Hope I am part of the daughters you have raised. I love being honest. During this time, I, ex I thought, I thought the fathers and the mothers of the land will help me while struggling to touch here and there, but I found out that they were never told about me. God never told them about me. <laughs> With my assignment and the call on my life, God has never told them. And when God has not told you, God, if God never sent Samuel, he wouldn't have recognized David. And if God had never told Moses about Joshua, Joshua wouldn't have stepped on, on the podium. He wouldn't have presented, Moses wouldn't have presented Joshua. I believe we always have to wait until the Lord tells his men and women in the spiritual realm who mentor us, who raise us. Until that time comes, I don't exist in their circle and I'm okay with it. I pray the Lord will talk to them in the spiritual realm so that they can help. Uganda. I came here on an assignment. I did not just leave Uganda to do my own things. <laughs> I did not leave Uganda like any other person. Most of you did not get to know when I was leaving. It stayed in the background. It stayed in the background and uh, It stayed in the background and, uh, yeah. It's been quite an, uh, the reason as to why I came, I left home. <coughs> the enemy never wanted me to leave. That's why he touched my, my face. Because he knew he's attacking. Because I was affected, my ear, my eyes, and my mouth. He did not only affect that. He affected my whole right hand side. You know when God calls you, the devil is always watching. Now if your parents don't ask the Lord who you are to help you, so that they can equip you. It's going to be very difficult for you. 
it's gonna be very difficult for you to fly high God has called you in a particular season God has called you in a particular rain he has called you somewhere and when God calls you when you're still alive no one takes your position that get from me no one takes your position God is going to deal with you until when you know that it is God speaking God does not give up and God does not make losses God can only give out your position when you're dead I don't know who is telling you what but when God chooses you especially at birth he's not going to give away your position unless you die and if you refuse to work let me give it to you as it is if you refuse to work God is going to take you out because God does not make losses because you're his own he's going to take you out they can only replace you when you're not breathing I don't know what your pastors are telling you that is why some of you became thieves you love stepping in shoes that are not yours be careful the shoes you want to take when God has not given you those shoes we different we're very very different so be very careful God cannot give away your position when you're still alive God is going to hunt you Moses ran away Moses came back at 80 years of age God does not leave it is you who takes yourself out of position. Samson slipped from his position. Because Samson had things that come from his lineage. Until Samson died, God never left. When God chooses you, especially from birth, he does not leave. Whoever is telling you that if you step aside, someone takes your position, they lie to you. I am speaking out of experience because I happen to come from a house where God brought someone back into the rightful position. No one should lie to you. My father, they got misunderstandings in ministry. And he left because whatever he was telling them to do cause his position my dad is has been he's still on but not as active but his shoes I am the only one who has his shoes the shoes were given to me on the 12 but I cannot operate fully when he's still alive I am still under his wing I got those shoes on the 7th of December 2021. God used a young man I have met never met physically to give me my father's shoes. My father was called and commissioned by God. He was not or man only ordained my father when God has said it and he was in ginger in Bugembe when he was in a technical school studying as a fitter mechanic then he comes back to Kampala he used to go to church in Kawawa Church of Uganda when he gave his life to Christ he just transferred down below the church in between there I don't know who took him there but he has a friend whom he was with in school who caused my father's being thrown out of school when God is connecting you to do his work he's gonna connect you to a man and a woman who carry an anointing that can help you and lift you to give birth to what God gave you before you were put in your mother's womb when you go to school, teachers just help you to give birth to that which God 
give. But if you're the type who wants to do what you want and you've not asked God, you're going to struggle until when you go back and ask God the real purpose as to why he created you. No one is going to teach you your purpose of God's purpose. No one. No one has that power. They just help you to give birth to what is inside already. Because they don't know it. They can guide you here, guide you here, guide you there, but they will not. Let me repeat myself. They will not. Especially if your assignment was just given birth to. Those God chooses particular people for the assignment. And he consecrates them and separates them. God has to talk to your father and mother. When my father agreed to marry my mother, a message came. And the Lord told them, give them a name for their firstborn child. That message was misunderstood. That message was misunderstood. And on the Queen's birthday, the late Queen Elizabeth, 2020, the Lord told me to call my mom to talk to my father. I had given the queen a, a wrong day. And my father asked me, when is the birthday of the queen? And now he's asking me on the real date. My father's memory is not good. When he talks to me, we don't struggle with the memory. When he talks to other people, the memory is not there. When it comes to me, I am showing you how God can keep your custodian when he still has work to do. Those who have met my father know this. When he sits, he keeps quiet because his memory was hit hard. When it comes to Esther, Tata's memory is good. And if I want anything, I don't push it. God gives me questions to ask him and I'm able to get the answers because my dad's work was not yet complete. He still has to operate. In 2020, the Lord sent me a, a young lady I have nev I've met once now. I had never met her. I got to know her through others. And the Lord told me to prepare my father. And on the 31st of December 2021, the Lord sent me someone to tell me that my father went to be with the Lord 10 years ago. Why he's still here, it's because his work was not yet completed. But my dad will soon go. We have fathers who have walked like that. My dad is on a list of men who would have gone 10 years back as of 2021. But God left him around because his work was not yet complete. When you complete your work, you rest from your labors. Some of you don't understand this death thing. You always cancel. A message comes and you just cancel it. Don't cancel that message. I want you to sit and ask the Lord. He will tell you. People who have experienced a message, God sending a message to their fathers, can attest to what I'm talking about. God has, on several occasions, come to talk to your spiritual fathers, to tell them to prepare themselves. 
Some of them don't listen. They brush the messages off and some have been caught up in the net. When a message comes, test the spirit. First John chapter 4, before you start calling it rubbish, before you start calling it a false prophet, test the spirit. If you really say that you walk in the spirit and you hear God speak and you and you you call yourself a servant of God, God is going to talk to you. There are some people God hides. I was never I never came to the US to change a lifestyle. I was sent on an assignment on behalf of Uganda. I was sent as a watchman. Watchmen watch over the land. God gives assignment, but I but the devil knew that it was my time to fly. The devil attacked. Started the attack in 2013. I made 30 years in 2014 on the 1st November. And before I made 29 years, when I was 28, the devil attacked. There is a time we taught a class and I told you we need to pray for number 28. Number 48 and number 58. The devil attacked when I was 28. He knows that reproduction comes through a woman getting pregnant. He first attacked. I've been under attack my whole life. He first attacked when I was 10 years of age. He came when I was 2. But because... I had parents, I was protected because I'm under their wing. My mother has moved from one church to the next my whole life, talking to the different men and women to pray for me. Most of your spiritual fathers of the land, the old men and women of the land in Uganda, you know me, you know my mother, you know my father. Some of you mainly know me and my mother. Those who know my father must have worked with him in Kabawa. This year he's 50 years in salvation and 47 years in service. But the 20 years, the 19 years, this is the 19th year of his service. He's been weak, though he's been sick for 20 years. But he never left the position. He stayed the high priest. When he wasn't able to do the work in a place, in a position where he ran away from, it stayed in his own house. At church, when he went back, he was sitting at the back. Because when you leave position, the human mind will always put others in position without asking the Lord. In 2000, the Lord told my father to go back to church. The Lord asked me to share with you my father's portion to help the servants out there. Because my dad stands in a position of number six. You call them the bishops. Some of you call them the Levites. That's my father's position. In 2000, the Lord told my father, we were praying in the house with a group of uh, the drama actors. My dad was a lead team, a, a team leader for the drama group. My dad is one man with a lot of uh, gifts. I come from a family where we are good in different things. My father's house is not only good in one thing. My father's house is a powerhouse. My dad is a powerhouse himself. There is a lot embedded inside. If you went to Chibuli Senior School, you're doing sciences because of my dad. 
he was thrown out of a Catholic school because of salvation. And how he was able to go back to school, it's because he was a boxer. And it's his friend, God used his friend, who is best in the UK now. They used to play together boxing, of which it was a game at home, was not emphasized to be played because the mother of the house feared for, his ch for her children. But you know, as kids, when they love something, you can't do much. Whenever they would put on the TV to watch boxing, she's like, what are you watching? So my dad was doing his boxing outside the house. He had friends. The way you have friends, the way you have your, your kids have friends. Little did he know that it is one thing God is going to use to take him back to school. And his friend told him, please don't tell them that you come, that you are saved. Don't mention that. You need to be wise. And he took him to Chivuli as a coach of boxing. The things I'm telling you about, his family member did not get to know. For them, they got to know that my dad refused to go back to school. They did not even know that he was able to get a certificate to do what he was doing. There were very few people who, were, who bothered. Who bothered to care about his well-being because my dad is an orphan of one parent. When you are in a family... I am a game changer. Take notice of your family members and their well-being. The way you want to be cared for, the way you want to be helped, the well-being of each member in your family is important because you don't know who God is going to use the time you need help. Parents, you might think you have money. You might think you have a blessing. But if that blessing does not come from God, you have wings of an ant. You might say that I've worked for my children and they have everything. If that blessing is not coming from God, you just have ant wings. You don't have what God gives. Some of you are just lucky. You're not blessed because you're not a source of great good to others. You might think you've made it in life, you've traveled, you've studied, you have a PhD. You will not know where everything you've worked for will go. I want you to be careful out there. There are people, when their fathers were alive, they had everything. When their fathers died, everything disappeared. Why do you think it disappeared? It is because you've never worked for God. You only have a passion, not a purpose for God. A passion is a grape. You have a seedless grape. You don't have an African Canarian. An African Canarian has a a seed so you won't be able to have fruits for your children to enjoy an African Canarian in my local language it is a uh, empath most of you have a purpose which is a passion because a passion is what you can put in monetary value a purpose, God-given purpose. No one can pay for it. If it was monitored in money value, or if it was... Uh, English is not my friend. <laughs> you know, my dad used to tell me to speak English so that I can get used to it. I would just keep quiet and look at him because I was not much of a talker when I was growing up. He did not even know that I can express myself in English. I surprised him one time when he brought a friend, a son of a friend, to, to, to help me with my mathematics. 
and my dad had me answer back when the young man asked me things. My dad was so shocked and surprised because I'm not so much of a talker. If you could put your purpose in money value, I don't think what Jesus did, you can do. How much can you be paid to go to the cross for the world? God's purpose is not termed in money values. The reason as to why Jesus was sent, it is not in monetary value. So careful out there when you're doing things that bring in money and you call that God's purpose. That is not God's purpose. I do not know your motivational speakers, what they teach you and what they tell you. I told you you cannot have only one teacher. Otherwise, you'll get stunted growth. The results of stunted growth is death. It will not be so nice for you. We won't be able to help you. But you're free to do what you want. You're free to do what you want. At any time you want it. But I pray the results will be good for you. Each one of you has something to teach someone. Each one of you, that's why we who work in the media department, we push you to a higher level so that you can teach others. That's why I've been doing what I do and I don't get tired. It is because there is something you have, something unique. I don't like uniformity. That's why I work in the media department to push you higher so that you can educate someone out there so that you can help someone who doesn't know what to do and where to get what. That is the whole point of people who share and tell others about who you are and what you're doing. Let us continue with uh, with slowly I'll be telling you a few things here and there. The Lord sent me to this country to watch over Uganda. You watch with your eyes, you hear with your ears and you warn. Well, I will help the watchmen. You can go and get yourself a copy of the books. A nation at the crossroad and the watchman over the land. You call yourself a watchman. Check yourself if you're really doing that which God called you to do. We have very many watchmen who are blind, who are actually not watching. They don't see, but they are watchmen. Get yourself this copy. If you're Ugandan and if you want to operate in Uganda. Actually, for those who are watchmen, get this self, get yourself a copy. A watchman and an intercessor, they are different. After making one year in the US, this man died, got an accident and died. I once posed the question to some people, and I'm like, why do you think that the big men and women are dying of accidents? No one has an answer and they've never thought about it. And if God says your time is done, why wouldn't you just sleep and go? The devil knows that your time is out. He's going to look for something he can use. So that he can leave a bitter taste in people's mouths. The land of Uganda is polluted. The land of Uganda is polluted with blood. 
we have altars of blood. Everything that was done to the leadership in Uganda, it is affecting us. It became our dress code. It became a lifestyle. When the king, Mutesa, the father, to the current king, when his time, he was taken out using poison, you have seen in government, in families, in church, people have been dying of poison. Why? I came out and I warned you about accidents. Because an accident was used through witchcraft to take out someone who carried kingship. Buganda counts only 36 houses. Those houses are not only 36. Those houses should be more than 36. We have the habit in Uganda of stealing power. I pity the men and women who are fighting for the king's seat. Because the Lord hid certain information. They don't have it. And since the Lord hid certain information, the current king will stay on that seat. After him, his son, until when the Lord says otherwise. So if you've been seated there and cursing, and you want the current king to die because you want the seat, I am very sorry to burst the bubble. The seat is not yours. Things were done when people were young. They were very young in age. When God was watching. If you've been waiting and you have been abusing the king of Buganda, yet whatever was done is out of his reach. And you've been busy waiting and abusing the king and you abuse his administration. I am very, 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 very sorry if you think you're going to do whatever it takes to see him out. I am sorry to bust your bubble. He's staying on that seat until God says otherwise. He passed the mark of 45 that took out his father. We are going to celebrate his birthday in a few days from now when he's making 68 years of age. Leadership in Uganda was supposed to be for kings. But because they started killing each other to get power, God decided to use the Western world to introduce presidentship. Because in Buganda, women are not given an opportunity to sit at the table to be part of leadership. And those who are still in that old lifestyle, they still run like that. Men who are tradition in their homes, their women don't talk. And if you've been there and you're disrespecting Mama Najinda Sylvia, you played a wrong card. No one disrespects your mother. No one disrespects the choice of your father. I don't think you have a right to disrespect any man's choice when it comes to wife. Those seeds you're planting, your kids will eat the fruits. So careful with your mouth. If you've been there and your part is to disrespect people, be ready to see your children eat the fruits of your seeds. If you are a leader out there of any format, a leader listens, then a leader emphasizes. When someone listens, 
the rightful purpose for having ears is activated. And when you listen, you're slow to do things. You don't take only one side. You need to find out what happened the other side. And you do what is right. You don't conclude. Even if you have ten reports, approach the person they are talking about and find out from their side. Then you can conclude the way you want. If you know you're under justice, please read the book of Acts. Please read the book of Acts. As you are celebrating the Holy Thursday, you're celebrating an Easter holiday which you don't actually understand. It is very, very sad I found out. We don't know the reason as to why we fasted for 30 days. We don't know the reason as to why Jesus came. It is sad, but it is the truth. Genesis chapter third sorry exodus chapter 13 and verses we stopped on verse 11 now let's read verse 12 i'll start from 11 now it shall be when the lord brings you into the land of the canaanite as he swore to you and your fathers and gives it to you you shall set apart and dedicate to the lord all that first opens the womb all the first born males of your livestock shall be the Lord's. Remember in Egypt, when Pharaoh refused, God touched the first bones of the land who were not covered, who were not protected in the blood that was put on the doorpost. They, ha they were not circumcised. Circumcision was a covenant God made with Abraham for righteousness. So if you know you are circumcised men, now physically, the class of circumcision will come. Whoever lied to you that that qualifies you to be a Muslim, that qualifies you, I hear, to, to be clean. C actually, cleanliness and righteousness go hand in hand. Now, whoever lied to you that when you circumcise, you don't get AIDS, tell them to attend class and help themselves. Circumcision means righteousness. It was a covenant where Abraham was supposed to walk right with the Lord. So every man and woman who was not circumcised back in the day physically, they did not qualify to be part of the house. If they wanted to be part of the house, they were supposed to be circumcised. So that when the Passover, the passing over meant the angel of death was passing to discipline Egypt from the king to the servants, the peasants, for being disobedient. Because God politely asked a fellow king. You know God loves kings. When a king does not recognize another king, there is a problem. And throughout the Bible, when you read it, kings used to, to see God, but they did not understand. That's why they would get men like Dave, uh, Daniel, Joseph, you know. But our current generation, we no longer have those men. Because they are too much in two material things. So they cannot do God's work. His way. It's about their ministries. It's about their families. It's about being big. It stopped being about God's work. Because they refuse to work together. 
cause God's work, it takes five. And number six is an overseer. The current season we are in as, a, as Uganda, until they put down their tools on a personal level and work as a team, you will still continue to see what you're seeing. More is yet to come. Hope you're prepared and ready. God sent Moses to warn the Israelites. Sent him to talk to the king. The king wasn't listening. God did different things. The king did not listen. Until when it was time to touch a child. That is when a firstborn was touched. Then after touching the firstborn, the king was very, very bitter. When you go back, in chapter 12, the king told Moses to leave immediately. Immediately. And he said, leave now and go serve your God as you told me. The king did not know that God wanted these men to be free. The king thought they were just going and coming back. He did not know that when you let go of a slave, unless upstairs is not working well, no slave is given an opportunity to run and you expect them to come back. So God told Moses to sanctify that is set apart for God's purpose every firstborn, the first offspring of every womb among the children of Israel, both a man and of animal, because they are his. Why was God doing that? Because God had sacrificed the firstborn of Egypt and the Israelites who did not obey, who disrespect Mo disrespected Moses. They were outside the house because they are like this old man. Who is he to talk to us? So now God comes back to tell Moses to consecrate before they leave. To consecrate them. They had left. They did the consecration outside. They had left from Ramathes to Sakoth, about 600,000 men on foot, besides the women and the children. A mixed multitude of non-Israelites from foreign nations also went with them, along with both flocks and herds and a very large number of livestock. And they baked unleavened cakes, they all left. Now the period of the time the children of Israel lived in Egypt was 430 years. At the end of the 430 years, to that very day, all the hosts of the Lord gathered in two tribal armies, left the land of Egypt. It is a night of watching to be observed for the Lord for having brought them out of the land of Egypt. This same night is for the Lord to be observed and celebrated by all the Israelites throughout their generations so when we go to chapter 13 while they were out there then god comes back to tell them to consecrate them and separate them because he needed to cleanse them for himself 
some of your kids. In 2020, I requested uh, the spiritual fathers and the mothers of the land to consecrate you people, to teach us about consecration, then to do it. I sent messages to different groups back then before I was thrown off WhatsApp groups. I requested the fathers of the land because I feared. Because I was like, they have the big platforms, they have the churches, they have the TV stations and radio stations, so they can speak. Why? Because people recognize them. People recognize their children. So when they speak, it will be easy for people to hear so that we are protected. And if I'm not mistaken, I did that between March, April, May, and June. Nothing was done. Everyone was doing their own thing. There were very few of them that picked it on. And they could not do it because I had said. All your classes, your pastors have been teaching... I handled them before they did. Because some people were like, I am copying from their fathers, spiritual fathers and mothers. And I'm like, it's okay. The Bibles are not theirs. The Bibles belong to the Lord. I pray that this season you go to church you're all consecrated and separated for God. This time round, when they consecrate you, your pastors will teach you about consecration and they'll go deep into it because they have to do it for God. I was, for those who haven't been attending, I was going back so that you know and pick up from there. Verses 12, you shall set apart and dedicate to the Lord all the first, all, all that first opens the womb. All the firstborn of males of your livestock shall be the Lord's. Every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem by substituting a lamb as a sacrifice for it. But now a lamb is being introduced. Jesus was called a lamb. The introduction of a lamb as a sacrifice starts here. So what you guys are celebrating was already done in the book of Exodus. So your pa th this is a night of Passover. It started at midnight on Thursday, that is in the morning. So, God asked Moses so that they separate the kids. Because the devil also got to know the power in a firstborn. Because if your firstborn fails, there are higher chances that your other kids might fall in line. Because the devil loves terminating door openers. He loves terminating door openers and terminating the last born. Because God uses both of them. A first and a last born belong to the Lord. We had a class of a first and a last born. I'll bring it back. We had it in 2020. The middle children are yours. The first and the last born are not yours. So careful when you're handling your children. In my local language, a first born is called Omugulanda, and the last born is called Omugalanda. They belong to the Lord. So now a lamb is being introduced. Instead of sacrificing the first bonds, now a lamb is introduced. To be used for ransom 
to buy you back. You shall set apart and dedicate to the Lord all that first opens the womb. All the firstborn males of your livestock shall be the Lord's. Every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem by substituting a lamb as a sacrifice for it. But if you do not wish to redeem it, then you shall break its neck so that no one takes it to use it. A lamb was introduced to be used for a ransom if you wanted to redeem a lamb was introduced instead of the firstborn as a sacrifice for it but if you do not wish to redeem it then you shall break its neck and every firstborn among your sons you shall redeem that is buy back from God with a suitable sacrifice Because a firstborn belongs to the Lord. He can take him out at any time. Day. So you want him back. You give a sacrifice of a lamb. That is what was happening in the Old Testament. And it shall be when your son asks you and it shall be when your son asks you in time to come saying what does this mean you shall say to him with a strong and powerful hand the lord brought us out of egypt from the house of bondage and slavery god bought israel out of the hands of an egyptian by using a firstborn Your slave master, for you want to buy a slave back, they have to give a ransom. Jesus is coming. God was buying us back from the devil because the sin made us children of the devil. When you sin, the devil has a legal tender over you. So God wanted to buy us back. They used the blood of animals, but it was not working well. Every time they have to look for animals. Now imagine if we have to look for a lamb, my friend. Do you have money to buy a lamb? Do you know how much it is? Buying a, 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 the meat of a lamb here, you have to be rich, my friend. Now you can imagine if we had to buy a lamb all the time. They ask for animals. Can you handle? If you are crying in economy just to be able to buy a kilo of sugar, you cry a lot. You think you can buy a lamb? You cannot. You don't have the money. You are poor. You always cry government yet yambi. That means you are poor. Even the rich are crying government yet to yambi. I'm like, ee, I thought you guys had money. You kept flaunting the money. Those who drink beer are always drinking and showing off. Then later I hear them crying that government yet to yambi. And I'm like, mm, that happened. With a strong and powerful hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt from the house of bondage and slavery. So for God to buy you out of slavery, bondage and slavery, a lamb is used. And in our generation, from Abraham to Jesus, there are 14 generations, and that is 2,000 years ago. Now how many generations have been added? And now for us, we are in the cover of Jesus. He was used as a ransom for you and me to stop being slaves, for your names to be washed and cleansed 
because the names we carry that they've given us come with bondage that comes from our lineages. Some of you are struggling in life because of the names you carry. Until you carry the name of Jesus, you're still a slave. So Easter period, whatever you call it, some are using eggs. An egg represents a tomb. You just celebrate things you don't understand. It is a season for God to buy us out of slavery and bondage. Bondage of families, bondage in churches, bondage in communities, bondage in countries, bondages in our associations. Because some of our leaders made us slaves. And when you sin, you become more of a slave. Because they are no longer serving God. They are serving their ministries. It stopped being God's work. And they are engaging in secret societies and bringing them at the pulpit. Trust me, if God called you, he's going to deal with you until when you understand that it is God. Because you bring these guys' ideas into the God's work. That's why in 20, 22, in January, the Lord told the church, a message was released that God left church because church has this in, in form of entrepreneurship. It has this. Everything is here. Those pyramids you're in, those secret societies you're in, they're all here. This brought bondage in church. You know the things you've been doing. Anything that is a pyramid, it does not work well with God. You see the pyramid and the eye? You engaged in it because you want to get money. Because of poverty. Why are we poor? It is because we've never left the bondage level. We've never left the slavery level. Because we refused to wear the uniform right. The army uniform. You don't have righteousness in your chest because it's not emphasized in church. Every time it pops, you call it judging. Your churches don't work with quality. They work with quantity. They love more of the numbers. Your well-being and your walk with the Lord is not important. On condition you receive it, you travel abroad, you build, you have a car, you're known, you're recognized in newspapers. It is what works. But is your name written in the book? That means the fivefold ministries and the bishops are sleeping because they're supposed to make sure the church is perfected. Unfortunately, the church was penetrated by the devil through secret societies, through money, through wanting big places, through wanting to be big, to travel abroad. Most of your pastors were not approved to go abroad, but they give testimonies that it was God. It is because the belt of truth is no longer in the West. And their nakedness is out. Because if your trousers don't have a belt, there are higher chances that the trousers will fall and you don't know the size of a trouser you wear. Because when God gives you a uniform, it's supposed to be complete. That is if you join the army, God's army, you don't remove a belt. No matter what, you don't remove a belt. You don't remove the breastplate. You don't compromise. You have to go an extra mile all the way. It is either you're in or you're out.
Verses 15, for it happened when Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go, that the Lord struck every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of animal. Therefore I sacrificed to the Lord all the males, the first to be born of every womb, but every firstborn of my sons I redeem. When you become a child of God, God is going to redeem you by using his own son as a ransom. That is why you're celebrating the season. Because you belong to him. You're his favorite. You're very important. It doesn't matter whether your family members look at you like trash. It doesn't matter whether your friends look at you like trash. It doesn't matter. When it comes to God, you come first. And he's going to protect you. He's willing to do whatever it takes to protect you. But it is up to you. The decision is yours. You want to stay in the secret societies because of money? Please go ahead. You want to compromise to go abroad? Please go ahead. You want to compromise to get married? Please go ahead. You want to compromise to give birth? Please enjoy. Compromise to build a house, buy a car? Please enjoy. Hope you're ready for the consequences at the end of the day. You want to be recognized in the newspapers to be called great? You work on big platforms? Please go ahead. Verse 16. So it shall serve as a sign and a redeemer on your left hand arm and as frontlets between your eyes. For by a strong and powerful hand the Lord brought us out of Egypt. No. There are people who are reading these scriptures and they are doing certain things God has not told them. People physically go and get the signs. Be very careful. Please. If you're physically getting these signs and you're using scriptures, those instructions were given by Israelites. I don't think God has yet told you to do that. Your cultures are doing that. They read it from the word of God. Some of your cultures, Baba Salah, so that they can identify you. That is not how God puts his sign when he left his son to come down. So careful when you're using the Bible to tattoo yourself. Read the whole Bible and understand why it was said. Go deeper into the word. Stop swimming from the shallow end. The edge you're at, you should be at the deep end. And you choose your lane and you swim your race. Verses 17, so it happened when Pharaoh let the people go. God did not lead them by way of the land of the Philistines, even though it was nearer. For God said the people might change their minds when they see war. That is, that there will be war and return to Egypt. But God led the people around by the way of the wilderness toward the Red Sea. The sons of Israel went, went up in battle, array, ordinary ranks, marching formation out of the land of Egypt. Many times I have seen people when they are going through a hard time, they seek God more. We saw that during COVID-19, when it had just started, when it hit, and we got lockdowns. People prayed more. But when the lockdown was lifted, people went back to make themselves dirty. When God washes, he does not put in the soil. When God washes, he puts on the lines and the garments are clean. They have no stains. Many times out of the problems, you always run away. I always see people when they don't have jobs, they frequent the church. When they want a deal to be passed, they frequent the church. After getting the deal, they have no time for God. They go back to business as usual. God has no space and place in their lives anymore. In our current generation, when it comes to church, 
the altars are very cold because we allow the devil to come at the altar. It is us who bring the devil. The devil loves a cold place because the altars no longer have the fire. When the intercessors go to pray, it's about their things. They come first. It's not about God's work. It's about their children. It's about their wives. When it comes to nations, they pray for only 30 minutes and that's it. When it comes to pray for your husband, you can pray until the sun comes down. When it comes to your children, eh, 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 eh. You want God to protect you, but you cannot protect God's work. You cannot defend God's work because it stopped being God's work. It is your endeavors and your hard work that you're protecting. Some of you have churches when God never told you to build a church because you've never understood the concept of a church. To some of you, church is a business. Some of you are building churches and you're not called to build. There is a difference between a ministry and a church. You can have offices of your ministry, but you can, it can't be turned into a church. Teaching does not mean that you became a pastor. But since you're wearing the shoe of a pastor, an apostle, and a teacher, get ready to pay the price to partake of that cup. You know, an evangelist and a prophet, you all have to be. Or you can be. All of you are supposed to evangelize in your shoe. But an apostle, a teacher, and a pastor, you're going to partake of the cup of Jesus in an amazing way this year. Some of you are going to be crucified in an amazing way. Some of you are already going through it. Hope you're ready for it. Those he called, they don't defend themselves. You don't need to defend right things. Right things are right. You don't need to defend. And what is so funny, when it's not your turn to be touched, you don't defend others. I don't see you come out strong when they touch your house. Then you start running around to want to be defended, to want to be protected. Many people have been going through a hard time and I've seen pastors close their doors and windows to sleep. When it's their turn, You think you're planting the right seeds? I'm just asking. It is because we stopped working for God. It's about our ministries. It's about my man of God, my woman of God. People have been manipulated. People have been disrespected. And people have been keeping quiet and distancing themselves from the men and women who are being accused of things. And now, those who defend each other, they work together, they flock together. It is not time to defend yourselves. It is time to change. Jeremiah chapter 15. It is time to repent and turn away from our wicked ways. It is not time to run around and write stories about who is doing what or where. I thought it was obvious everyone sees it. Whatever is happening right now is because we are disobedient and we don't listen. Instructions were given and we never followed. Until they touch your father, that is when you get to know that manipulation is bad. Yet you're also part of the teams that manipulate others. That disrespect others. It's not the first time they are touching people here and there. It's been our lifestyle.
But I have seen you guys work in camps. When they touch Dr. Mlinde, we should all come out. When they touch Pastor Robert, all of us should come out. When they touch Apostle Alex Mitala, all of us should come out. When they touch Pastor Tom, if you know you gave your life to Christ, you come out for all. But I have seen different houses keeping silent and quiet. And some are being part of those who destroy others. When one loses a father, or a mother, or a wife, or a child, it's a few that come to mourn. And others, they are not important. And you think you're working for God. I have seen pastors keeping quiet when people are being destroyed. When it's their turn, that is when they start to run around. The time we are in is not, we don't have time to start defending ourselves. God will defend us if we are walking right. I told you the public wing is going to be, the private wing is going to be touched. I warned you. If it's time to celebrate one house, let's all celebrate them because they all have a work to do for God. I told you this year, you're going to be touched if you want a blessing. Jacob had to limp. You're going to limp for your name to be changed. And you have to serve no matter what. Until when Uganda changes, until when you learn to work together, you're going to see more. When they touch the man below, you all come out to defend the man if you wear the same uniform. But it seems like the soldiers are split. We have those who work for, they wear green, some wear red, some wear blue. What is the army uniform of the Lord? salvation on your head the breastplate in your chest the belt of truth in your waist, the shoes of the gospel on your foot the word of god as the sword then faith as your shield then the fivefold ministries and the bishops on your back to protect you what do you guys do those who are in the back all they do is to backbite you all they do is to destroy your reputation I guess that's how they serve the Lord. When they touch your spiritual father, you start running around. They've been touching other spiritual fathers and you've been part of the team that throws stones to other spiritual fathers. You've been part of the team that manipulates and disrespects and destroys reputations for years. I guess we are all victims. And you're seeing the results of the things we do, right? Our part is to start. You were judging, you were judging. And the Lord is passing you by. Hope by the time you wake up, it won't be too late. Because everyone has their time. If you're called an apostle, if you're called a teacher, if you're called a pastor, you're going to partake of the cup Jesus took. Where he had a blood, his tears, his sweat became blood. Hope you're ready for it. To all shepherds, 
a teacher, the Bible calls a teacher and a pastor a shepherd. And an apostle, the prophetic, everyone carries the prophetic. Because it's a gift. Jesus was six in one. The three cord. You're going to partake of that cup. And when the cup is bitter, prayer is the solution. Not coming out to defend yourself. You go and check yourself. Is your private wing clean? You go and read Jeremiah chapter 15 and help yourself. Because if you're clean enough, God is going to beat back every tyrant in your life. So to every slave master in church, WhatsApp groups, these associations, altars, families, if you know you're a slave master and you decided to lock God's people inside, when they move to the other side, you quarrel, you started a church and God never told you, make sure your altar has all the six and they are operational. And there is quality. It's not about the numbers. It is time to wear the uniform right. If they touch the things you're doing in private or public and you shout and make noise, make sure you're not taken to prison. Because you're going to partake of those cups until when Uganda listens. God knew the heart was weak. After you get out of the problem, you go back to business as usual. It feels like there was nothing. Some of you even make fun out of it. They lied about they lied to us about COVID. They did not lie to you. You called it a hoax. It was not a hoax. You think God did not know that it's there? God wanted us to prepare. But you never saw it coming. God warned Uganda. This is the 38th year. 10 years that are not documented. 28 years of June this year. They are in this book you don't read. If you want to invest in Uganda, get this book and help yourself before you fall a victim of what is going on on the land. Because the land of Uganda is polluted. And God wants it clean. But if Uganda don't listen, go read what he said would happen. Some of your children are in this book. As of 1995, the month of June, I was 10. I don't know how old was your daughter or son. Some of your kids are chosen for the season. Hope they are doing what God wants them to do. God knew that they would go back. That's why he made them go around. So that he cleans them up. Most of us have left our nations and gone abroad. When we reached there, we mixed and mingled. And we look like abroad. Because you have an American passport, now you behave like an American. And you have all the reasons to give excuses. Now let me hope you're not part of the team God has chosen for his work. Hope you were not consecrated at birth and separated for God's work. Because if you were, get ready is coming for you. Some of you are going to leave everything you're holding abroad and you're going to be forced to be taken back home. Watch and stand. When you refuse, God does not let go until when you move. Hope you're ready to start serving God at eight. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for Joseph had solemnly ordered, placed under an oath, 
the Israelites, saying, God will suddenly take care of you, and you must carry my bones away from here with you. Then John, they, they journeyed from Sarkos in Goshen and camped at Etham on the edge of the wilderness. The presence of the Lord was going before them by day in a pillar, column of cloud, to lead them along the way and in the pillar of fire by night to give them light so that they could travel by day and by night. He did not withdraw the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from going before the Lamb. When God uses his son as a ransom, you get light. You get discipline. Because his son is the word. The lamp unto your feet. You need light. That is the word of God. People who don't read the word of God are not disciplined. You lack discipline because you don't have the word. Some of you just read it, but it has never been part of you. You don't walk the talk. Hence, you have no discipline. Jesus' coming and dying was for us to be disciplined so that the Holy Spirit can come and we get the fruits. We get the gifts, then we bear fruit. Until that happens in your life, continue celebrating a ritual. I am going to stop here for today. Enjoy your Holy Thursday with your families. Enjoy the season. First things first, obedience is very important. If you disobey, you might not get to the promised land. Ask the Lord if you are set, separated and consecrated for God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. Thank you so much for loving us. Thank you so much for wisdom. Thank you so much for understanding. Come and have your way. Come and have your way. Come and have your way. Thank you so much for the opportunity to serve. I always pray for the men and women I see as a point of contact for those who sit in the back and watch. I pray for Chiemba John, Sempa Diana, and Brian Bibo Harry. I cover them in the blood of Jesus. They have represented the male and the female. Enlarge their territories for them to be a blessing to your people. I pray for their children because after them it's their children that take on the mantle. I pray for their children. To be able to eat the fruits of the seeds their parents have planted for many years. I pray that they plant the African canarian, not just a grape. I pray it has a seed. That is the purpose of God in our lives. Protect them, Lord, during this Passover so that death does not knock at their doors. If it does, let death see the blood of Jesus, the reason as to why he died, because he became a ransom for us. God used his son for us to be bought from the hands of the devil, from bondage and slavery because of sin. Because the devil has a legal tender when we sin, but because of the blood of Jesus, we were bought back to belong to God. Father, protect every man and woman out there. No devil, no one who is not approved of God will touch them on their own. Father, protect them because they are your own. You said you're going to protect Jacob because Isaac was yours. Everything that comes from that which is yours, you protect. Lord, protect us. Protect us in the U.S., protect us in Uganda, protect on behalf of Africa, protect those in Europe, protect those in Asia, protect those in Canada, protect those in Australia, protect those in the Middle East. 
Lord, protect your own because they each have a sign of the blood of Jesus. I purge them with the blood of Jesus. Come and have your way. Lord, I pray for every man and woman out there who is being crucified. I repent on their behalf for the private wing and the public wing that does not glorify your name. Father, forgive us. We have sinned and fallen short of your glory. You ask Jeremiah to repent and turn away from his ways that were not glorifying you because you, want, you were after Jeremiah. That is why you asked him to repent because he was your chosen instrument. I pray for every man and woman you have chosen for your purpose. I pray that they sit down instead of defending themselves. They sit down, check themselves and make sure they are clean so that you can beat the tyrant. Because you said in your word in Jeremiah chapter Jeremiah chapter 15 Jeremiah was crying and defending himself. He was taken to prison. He was told a lot of things because of your work. To every man and woman who was chosen by God. When Jeremiah was crying, you talked to him. Jeremiah said, O Lord. Jeremiah 15 verses 15. Jeremiah said, O oh Lord, you know and understand honestly. Remember me and visit me and avenge me on my persecutors. Take me out. Take me not away from joy or from life itself in your long suffering to my enemies. Know that for your sake I suffer and bear reproach. Your words were found and I ate them, and your words were to me a joy and the rejoicing of my heart, for I am called by your name. O Lord God of hosts, I sat not in the assembly of those who make merry, nor did I rejoice. I sat alone because you powerfully had, your powerful hand was upon me, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain perpetual and my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Will you indeed be to me like a dread, a deceitful brook, like waters that fail and are uncertain? I know there is a man out there who is praying such a prayer. This is the word from the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord to you can put your name. If you return and give up this mistaken tone of distrust and despair, then I will give you again a settled place of quiet and safety. The Lord is ready to give you a settled place of quiet and safety. That is, if you return. And give up the mist, this mistaken tone of distrust and despair. He said, then I will give you again a settled place of quiet and safety. And you will be my minister. And if you separate the precious from the vile. Cleansing your own heart from unworthy and warranted suspicions. Unwarranted suspicions concerning God's faithfulness. You shall be God's mouthpiece. But do not yield to them. Let them return to you and not you to the people. I will make you to this people a fortified bronze wall. They will fight against you, but they will not prevail over you. For I am with you to save and deliver you, says the Lord. And I will deliver you out of the hands of the wicked. And I will redeem you out of the palms of the terrible and ruthless tyrant. May that scripture be activated in your life. So that every tyrant in your life whether they are in church, in family, in associations, in schools, at altars. May the Lord deal with every tyrant, every slave master in your life. Your part is to return to the Lord. And you pour your heart before the Lord. And you change. If there is any wickedness, anything you did that does not glorify God, this is the time. So that you cleanse yourself because you were chosen as an instrument for the Lord. Many times you're going to fight people when in actual sense you're fighting God. It is time to put that fighting tools down and you go before the Lord on a personal level. Don't go with your titles as a pastor, apostle, prophet, bishop, evangelist, mother or father. Go in as you and report yourself using your name and the Lord will fight for you. 
because all he wants is you. He wants to deal with you. This season, God was dealing with us on a personal level. That's why you were isolated. You did not understand why COVID came with an isolation card. God wanted to deal with us on a personal level at our personal altars. I pray it's not too late for you. Make sure that when the time the candle burns out, your garment is clean enough for you to go. When someone touches a point in your life and says you did this and that, it is a card for you to check yourself. Not to tell people that they are judging you. It is helping you as a person. I went through it and I'm not where I used to be. I had to check myself. It wasn't easy. I defended myself. But every time I came out to defend myself, the more I looked guilty. The more people believed words and I was isolated. People ignored me. People distanced themselves from me. Until when I stopped defending myself. It took me a full year to do that. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. Because it all started in 2015. When God changed the level. I saw the devil running to destroy what God started in my life. To destroy what was given birth to. But because... God knew me before I was put in my mother's womb. He gave me a name. Between 83 and 84 before, my mother got pregnant. I've been able to survive the grave. I don't know how many times. Hope it helps you as a person too. So that you only go when it is your time to go. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I hide under the shadow of your wings. I hide under the blood of Jesus. No man or woman who is not approved of God, no spirit that is not approved of God will see me in the physical or spiritual reign. Hide me, Lord, the way you hid Isaiah in Isaiah 49. For your work to be done perfectly and the right way. I give you praise, Lord. I give you glory. I give you honor. Whoever stands in my way, may Genesis 12 sort you out. If I wasn't a blessing, then I became a curse. Because the Lord said he's going to bless me as a source of great good to others. And he's going to bless whoever blesses me and curse every man and woman. Who curses, who has contempt, dishonors, disrespects. It's in Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 to 3. Partake of it and the Lord will protect you. I am an immigrant so I partake of it. If you are an immigrant of any sort, when you leave your father's house, you become an immigrant wherever you go. May the Lord give you an understanding of his word. May the Holy Spirit be activated in your life for you to get the gift of understanding. It's part of the seven gifts and the nine gifts so that you can bear fruit. Wisdom, understanding, and knowledge are gifts from the Holy Spirit. They don't teach them in class. Activate the Holy Spirit in your life so that you can fly higher. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name, I believe and pray. Amen and amen. It is always an honor to see someone. We are not stopping. We are going higher. All the classes will be happening on this page. You can tell a friend to tell a friend a friend. Those who cannot access Facebook, I have a YouTube channel. When you look on the page, you will see the classes you've never attended. The Lord asked me to repeat the classes of 2020. his way because he had to deal with me on a personal level he had to deal with a broken heart because I became a wounded soldier
a wounded soldier of more than 30 years. That is not a simple time to deal with. Hope when it's your turn, you allow the Lord to deal with you on a personal level. Have a good night. Enjoy your time when I'm, al when I'm alive, I go live. See you around. Bye-bye. Thank you for attending and being patient with me. Stay blessed.